This uh, shot shows the point gauge pointing towards the vertex of the V-notch weir, which will set up our zero reading. I set it up at 50, and you can set it up at whatever level you feel comfortable with. And then we, may, we move this back and get the pump started again. Remember, the valve needs to be fully closed before we start the pump. And then I'm going to give it a couple of turns here. And here we have the um, entrance to the flume being filled up, filled up. And you can see the flume here building up before it starts flowing over the uh, B-notch weir. This flow is not as large as the one we started with in the rectangular flume, so it's gonna take a while to fill up, but it's starting to fill up and starting to spill over the V-notch weir. And so as we did for the rectangular channel, we need to measure the depth of flow making sure that the tip of the, of the point gauge touches the surface of the water and taking the proper readings in the, um, in the vernier and then changing the discharge a few times. Well, this is this seems to be uh, pretty high actually, you know, like almost overflowing the top, so we have to lower down the discharge a little bit. So we got the, you know, the tip of the point gauge touching the surface of the water, and here we have a flow over the V-notch weir. Remember to um, measure these charges. We lower the, the valve there, and use our um, The, the discharge measurement here, this is very low, very slow moving, as you can see. So, you know, you, you can count there the time required for it to go up by a liter to calculate the discharge. So, we're going to be using very relatively low discharges for the V notch weir. And once we're done with the discharge measurement, pull this valve off again so that the the, um, the measuring tank and drain back into the dump tank. Now, when we're done with the measurements, as we did in the experiment with the flume, shut down the valve, turn off the pump, and that will be it.